I don't think I don't think there's as many people aware of what's going on as I would like, and, and a lot of it, people have cognitive dissonance, and they 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 wouldn't want to believe what I'm saying. It, it would shock them, and, and and there'd be a lot of grief and guilt, and you know the you know the the stages of um of awakening, and and it, it's hard for people to go through. So I have I, I have empathy for them. And, Uh, and we've seen some information about stocks dropping of these big pharma companies, but nowhere near as much as what we're, we're, is, is actually happening, correct? Well, so Moderna is down 70%. In a normal time, that would make lots of news. I mean, this company was worth billions and billions of dollars last summer, and all of a sudden now it's lost 70% of its value. I'm not a lawyer, but there's a precedent uh, when fraud occurs it's, it's contract law there's many cases on this if fraud is proven it eviscerates all prior contracts if the, if the contract was entered into uh with one party not knowing that and my my contention is that the clinical trial data was fraudulent if that can be proven it's game over a uh, pfizer will be sued into oblivion and that's why you know i'm very bearish on pfizer's stock long term well there are organizations that know that Pfizer have been operating fraudulently, and one of those is the FDA. And you've been speaking about that. Well, the FDA is in on it. That's part of the problem. I'm afraid it's even worse than the, you know, obviously the original deaths were tragic, but we're getting uh, data from funeral home, uh, public funeral home companies and insurance companies that found acceleration in death rates in the second half of 2021. So the mandates coincided with the increase in spike in deaths. So, and he said that, you know, they were seeing 40% increase in all-cause mortality, non-related, especially among young people. Uh, and, and you understand, these are, these, are, these, these are group life insurance policies. So these are working people employed with life insurance policies. Um, so it's a very specific group. It's not, it's not, you know, people that have been laid off. It's not people who small business got shut down, so they're depressed and committing suicide or overdosing on fentanyl. These are healthy people working that are just dropping dead. We analyzed, we focused on group policy line items in the insurance company reports because they're big companies with diversified businesses. So we focused on group life because the way the accounting works, it's gonna show up there sooner than in individual policies. We saw that the uh, benefit loss ratio increased substantially from Q4 of 2021 versus baseline 2019. And in many cases, in some cases, it accelerated for different companies. Some, in some companies, it decelerated, but overall, the trend in depth was up. So here's the summation of uh, insurance company corporate group policy loss ratios, death claims. This is the Q4 rate versus 2019 uh, base rate. Unum Insurance plus 36%, Lincoln National plus 57%, Prudential plus 41%, Reinsurance Group of America plus 21%, Hartford plus 32%, MetLife plus 24%. And then uh, I have one more. Let me just get that. I forgot to add um, a Principal Financial Group plus 37%. My thesis is, if you know a, a debt bubble is going to blow up and you know that you won't be able to pay pensions and um, people's life savings will be wiped out, um, wouldn't it be interesting to use the as cover to set up a system uh, to prevent all that from happening called uh, a medical system? I call it under the, the guise of medical, you know, welfare or, or, or help it's a it's it's a it's a stealth tyrannical system that can be switched from medical to riot prevention pretty quick and it's a global way to control the collapse so they put it in place under the guise of um medical care now, is the collapse guaranteed Edward? oh absolutely yeah, it's just a question of timing, whether it's this year or next year.